Hello everyone, welcome to part one video of a series of my next review of the open spot from Shark RF. This will be a series of video. I will do some minor testing tonight and start to play with the interface, make it work in C4FM primarily. And then we'll do some other tests later on. Maybe I'll, I'll do more depending. Okay, I had to tell you I did plug it in last night and I look at the web interface. I think it took me like 50 seconds to put it online on C4FM and do my first test. It was very easy. This has its own built-in web interface or web server that lets you do the config. So that is something that is different from using a Raspberry Pi like I have here, okay, uh, to, to do the config. It's a lot more easier, it's easier to get in and it's, it just drop down menu. So it's very easy. And uh, it, it, I told you, it's, it's just a few seconds I was online. So that's great. It's independent. You don't need a PC, but you need something IP, a tablet, a phone, or a PC to just log in and do your config. Uh, something people say is when you unplug it, it loses its configuration. So maybe in the future, there'll be a way to have a battery backup. And uh, I didn't notice that because I unplugged it and I didn't plug it back. So I will check that out uh, in a few minutes. I will do some testing. I know the guys did tests uh, using a C4 FM radio, a Yizu radio, System Fusion, doing DMR with it. And they did the reverse. They took a DMR radio and they did C4 FM. So they went on, uh, on the C4 FM reflector with DMR radio and they went on DMR plus reflector with uh, C4 FM radio and it did work because this one has a AMB chip on it so it can do the translation like I said it's feel very heavy it's a good quality and it's probably because you can plug the Ethernet cable and it won't move on your desk so maybe that's why yesterday I said it has a uh, Wi-Fi interface but I don't think so I have to I'm gonna check that out I'm gonna confirm with you that I will go through the config and uh, I did plug it in, like I said, using the RG45. So let's start the testing. I'll talk with a few friends and we'll post this video and we'll do some uh, more tests as uh, the days goes by and we'll do a few uh, part uh, of that series doing different tests. If you have any questions, comments or tests you would like me to do, an impression you want me to, to, to share with you guys, just go in the comments below just you know uh, do the comments ask your question i always answer all the question and i do uh, take uh, uh, all the information that i can and to share with you guys you can also go on my website on my uh, personal blog va2pv and you can go there also i will do a dedicated page to the open spot like i did with the dv4 mini and then you can go there and see uh, all the snapshot and all the video that i made over time so you can follow all the testing from there so let's start doing some tests. So there's the, the open spot. Like I said, very stable. <laughs> On the table, it's very heavy. So then we will start by plugging here. Sorry. Plugging the RG45. Like I said, it's heavy. So it stays there. Maybe that's why they put some weights. So they thought about everything. But it's all also give us a very good quality feel. And here we're gonna plug the open spot. Hold on a second and make sure that you see the LED. Hold on. I'm a little bit short on my cat five. Okay. There you go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the web interface, do some snapshots and log in. The good thing about the open spot is when you plug it into your network using the Ethernet cable, it get an IP address dynamically. But you don't need to know the address to connect into the device. This device has a web server integrated into it. So what you do, you just type in open spot and you press enter and it will bring you directly in the device. Then you will see the IP address that it gets from here. 
but you'd enter the password. The default is open spot in small letters and you get right in the settings. But then you can switch the modem and come here, all your, your setting area. So what you do, first thing, what I did is just put your, this is optional, but just put my location. Go to the modem, idle, go to here. So what we're gonna do, we got, oops, sorry about that. That's only the printer. So we'll go to FCS, put it in Fusion. I will switch the modem to C4FM. Then I will put my simplex frequency that I use that I already programmed on my radio for my hotspot. I will copy and paste the frequency here. Go on FCS003, which is the labwanek.ca Yezu Fusion reflector. Put my call sign, yeah, 2PV. Put my DMR ID, 302, 209. Okay. And I will go on port 70, where my friends are waiting for me for some tests. So now it's saved. The setting is there. So I can also, if I want, just keep the frequency here save this frequency and I'm in C4FM so but if you are in FCS mode here and connected to a FCS reflector but you don't have a fusion radio what you can do but you have a DMR radio you can do is you come here and you set it up in DMR and you put save What's going to happen is you're going to transmit with your DMR radio. The device will translate it in C4FM into the fusion reflector. But you can also be in DMR air and the radio in C4FM and doing the exact reverse. You can do that with D-Star as well. But in D-Star, it's only work on reflector that use DCS. The others are will come available with the uh, firmware upgrade. So that's it. You're set up and now you just have to use your open spot. Okay. So now here's my FT2DR C4 FM radio. It's in DN in digital narrow. And then you have the frequency uh, that I set up for my open spot. What I'm going to do, I'm set on port 70 which is the SoCal room uh, of uh, the um, uh, on the FCS 003 reflector. So I'm going to try to call someone. Hopefully someone will answer. Look at the LED. As you can see the status, there is some activity on the uh, on it. So I don't know what does that mean exactly. And like I've all good arms, I didn't went through the manual before I started playing with the toys. So <laughs> so. Let's go and try to uh, to, to go uh, to, to to talk to someone on that reflector. VA2 PV testing and listening. You can see the activity it is receiving. The modem was green, and it was receiving uh, my transmission that I did with the FT2. Hello, Pascal. Here is W1KFR. Good evening. Well, good evening, Bill. I'm actually having the cameras rolling, so please let me know if you're shy and if you don't want to uh, to hurt yourself on YouTube. <laughs> I'm actually testing the open spot. Fantastic. The open spot is sounding good on the Fusion. And this is Bill W1KFR in Keeneland, Georgia. And uh, you are sounding good. Your audio is nice. Well, thank you very much, Bill, for the test. And I'm just showing uh, the, the LED right now. I'm just filming the open spot. And you know, something I was telling the, the, the guys on the video is that th this thing is heavy and there is a, a metal plate in the bottom. So it sits right on the desk and it doesn't move, even if you plug in the uh, uh, a large uh, Ethernet cable. Uh, back to you, Bill. W1KFR VA2PV. Thank you. 
WPV. Here is W1KSR. Pascal, I, I want to put a plug in for the design and the construction and materials they use for the open spot. Because I, like you, noticed that uh, heavy duty heat sink on the bottom. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, the design and the energy they put into the design of this thing is just phenomenal. So I think this thing is going to run and run and run and it's going to keep on going. So I'm glad that you got yours and you got it on the air and you're testing it. Back to you, VA2PV, here is V1KFR. Okay, now what's particular is that I have my DMR radio set up, like I just showed you in the screen capture, into diffusion reflector. So let's try that. W1KFR, Victor Alpha 2, Papa Victor, using his DMR radio on the Yezu Reflector FCS003, port 70. Back to you, the A2PV. The A2PV, here is W1KFR. I am also on GMR on this Reflector 3. And you are loud and clear, sir, loud and clear. Sounds good. So this concludes my part one video of the review of the open spot from Shark RF. Actually, as I was doing the test, I did have at some point some packet loss. So what I did is I upgraded to the latest firmware. But while I was doing the upgrade and I did follow Shark RF video instruction, that you can check out here and you just follow a step by step but while I was doing the file transfer it crashed on me uh, because you know I, it's my computer it's not the open spot but you know the transfer didn't went well and I had an error so what I did is I put the boot I did the, uh, using the reset button I, uh, I used the other method for the bootloader unplug and replug the power while I was holding the reset button and it reboot and then I start again and it worked and it was a success so if it ever happens to you don't worry you just do the procedure that I'm telling you and uh, it's gonna work so you don't have to worry about this and everything went fine after that and it was uh, a lot more uh, stable so remember as I said in the beginning of the video when I did my introduction uh, I said it lost is comfy no it did not I did plug it back and it was exactly where where I configure uh, before on the same reflector on the same mode even after a few minutes of unplugging it so uh, the config was still there uh, didn't see any config for the Wi-Fi so maybe we can use a Wi-Fi converter on the Ethernet part so I don't know about that but uh, we'll do some further testing and we'll go through the device uh, in details in a future video so I hope you enjoy and on behalf of our team, I would like to wish you my best 70 trees.